Hello, everybody, and welcome to Study My Brother Don, and happy Thanksgiving. This is Thanksgiving Day, and it's a wonderful day. Uh, I love it. We're not actually uh, having Thanksgiving today. We will be Saturday, family scattered out. So it would just be me and my wife and my mama. She just got here, and uh, we're going to eat here in a few minutes and celebrate Thanksgiving together. But it's a wonderful day. And it's a wonderful day because it's a time that we stop, even though we, we thank the Lord all year long and we live with that thankful attitude all year long because of what God has done for us. It's just one day that we've set aside or that has been set aside. And I think, you know, it goes all the way back to the pilgrims and uh, they were thanking the Lord for bringing them to this new country and giving them the opportunity to worship him as the scripture says, instead of as a church or a government says. And we need to remember that and be thankful for that. And uh, I'm going to be short uh, today. I, I don't want to drag this out. Just a couple of thoughts. I'm not going to talk about the news or talk about Israel today. Just, just a couple of thoughts about thanksgiving and i want to use philippians chapter four and just verses two through seven and this is one of those passages well you know when you, you start looking at something and then you read above and below and, and man it just and you could just go on forever with this passage with the book of philippians with the new testament with the bible you know i just that that's the way i am i just i get into it and i just want to do it all but philippians chapter 4 and just these these few verses the apostle paul writing and he says i implore you Adia, and i implore syntyche to be of the same mind in the lord and i urge you also true companion help these women who labored with me in the gospel with clement also and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So it's a, a beautiful passage, and it speaks to us of, of rejoicing in the Lord. And, and I equate rejoicing with thanksgiving. But then he tells us in verse 6 that when we pray, we are to pray with thanksgiving. Come to the Lord with, with thanksgiving in all of our prayers and our supplications. And I think the overriding thought in all of this is that we should be thankful for the Lord's grace and mercy above all else, because were it not for the Lord's grace in salvation, were it not for the Lord's mercy in forgiving us of our sin, where we should have been held responsible, but forgiving us of our sin, in fact, taking our sin and putting it on Jesus Christ on the cross where he paid the price for our sin, folks, that should be our, our, our thanksgiving in our entire life with our entire being because if it weren't for God's grace and mercy and if it weren't for what Jesus did on the cross, we would be dead in our trespasses and sins, condemned and bound for hell, but because of Jesus Christ. So therefore, let us give thanks to the Lord. Now, there's a couple of things that I want to point out here. And he begins in, in 2 and 3, speaking to two ladies and then speaking to Clement, saying to help them because they're having a little row. You know, uh, he doesn't say what, just that they're having a little problem. And he just asked them to be of the same mind in the Lord. Okay, so we're doing this. Why? in the Lord, because of the Lord and what he's done for us. But then in verse three, he gives them another thing to think about. And he says, remember, at the end of the verse, he says, remember that your names are in the book of life. We are written in the book of life. And if you go to the book of Revelation, 
you find out several things in there about the book of life. And one is, is that if you're in the book of life, you're sealed by the Holy Spirit. And, and you'll see also that, that he ties it to the mark of the beast. I'm not going to get deep into this. And he says, those whose names are in the book of the life, because they stood. They didn't take the mark of the beast. Folks, if your name is in the book of life, if you're a child of God, that means that you have security, eternal security in the Lord Jesus Christ because of what he's done for us. That's grace. That's mercy. And then in verse 5, he says, let your gentleness be known to all men. And here's the phrase, the Lord is at hand. Amen. There is prophecy. There's prophecy in everything. Amen. The Lord is at hand. The, the soon return of the Lord is at hand. It could happen at any moment. That's part of what I preached last Sunday. If you haven't watched that message, you need to go back and watch it. That's part of the proof of the pre-tribulation rapture is the Lord is at hand, the imminence of his return. And folks, that ought to play into our hearts and our lives each and every day. We should always have that thanksgiving attitude. We should always have that attitude of what he says up here to Judea and to Syntyche, that our names in the book of life, the Lord will soon return to, to take us, John 14, out so that we can be where he is. So we ought to always be thankful, and that thought should govern all of our relations. We don't have time to be upset with each other. We don't have time to be at odds with each other and maybe not speaking or, or worse yet, trying to get revenge. We don't have time for that because the Lord is at hand. Our name is in the book of life, and the Lord is at hand. He could come today. And do you want to stand before the Lord knowing that you're mad at somebody, you haven't spoken to somebody for, for years maybe, you've been walking around with this grudge wanting revenge and the Lord comes today and you've got to stand before him with that on your heart. Oh, I pray not so. Make it right. Get things straightened out as much as is in you. Live at peace with all men because the Lord is at hand. And then he gives us this great promise. This, this is awesome. Beginning in verse six, he says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And watch what he says in verse seven, when we do this, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So this attitude of thanksgiving, this living our lives with the knowledge that we are written in the book of life and that the Lord is at hand, when we live like that and we just trust the Lord, and that's what verse six is, to be anxious for nothing, that you could say, just trust the Lord, don't worry about it. As Charles Stanley used to say, just be obedient and leave the results to the Lord. The consequences, leave them to the Lord. Don't worry about it. Why? Because we've prayed, we've supplicated before the Lord, we, we've poured out our heart before the Lord, we've done it with thanksgiving. And here's what's going to happen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. That means when you find yourself in situations that seemingly there's no way out, when you find yourself in situations like many will during this coming holiday season, they, they feel alone, they feel abandoned, but yet there's the peace of God that passes all understanding and it keeps their hearts and it guards them, it, it keeps their hearts and minds, and it guards them through Christ Jesus. I think about, and I said I wasn't going to mention it, and I'm not in as far as teaching, but I think about like the situation in Israel and how easy things like that could happen here in the United States or, or wherever you are because the Muslims have 
have infiltrated the whole world and their purpose is to bring Islam to the whole world. And so any of these things could happen anywhere. But even in times like that, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds. It's that peace of God that, that when you should be falling apart, when you should be consumed by worry, by depression, it's that peace of God that guards us. It goes beyond all understanding. How can I be in this situation and still be at peace? It's because of God. And so we look back. We remember that our names are written in the book of life. Amen. We remember that the Lord is at hand at any moment in the midst of the deepest, darkest time of my life and of my trial. The Lord could come back. The Lord could call me home. And then we have that peace that passes all understanding. So what do we do today? We go to the Lord with thanksgiving. We thank the Lord for all of the blessings that he's given us. We remember his grace and his mercy that we are in the book of life. We remember that at any minute, at any second, he could come for us. The Lord is at hand. And then we remember that his peace will keep us when we simply trust him. Amen. Happy Thanksgiving. And I hope you have a blessed and a wonderful day. Uh, I know I'm looking forward to the rest of the day, having a meal with my mother and my wife, my two favorite women in this world, with my daughters and my granddaughters, but they'll be here Saturday. And just a beautiful day that the Lord has given us to thank him for his grace and his mercy. I want to say real quick too, thank you to all of our um, uh, new subscribers and uh, to uh, ask you to remember to share and to like these videos and, and uh, share them all over the place. There's no fee. There's, there's no stipulations. Just share the word of God with all your friends and your family. And uh, I look forward to uh, seeing you Sunday. I'll be uh, preaching Sunday morning and I'll upload that. And, uh, and it's just, thank you for making this channel possible. God bless you.